Okay, so getting a new VHF antenna has been part of the plan, and so I got that taken care of. Uh, my rigger guy is using the wrong fasteners in here, so I got to go see if I can find some more of these little rounded cap screws. Missing a rivet here. Um, just lots of little things right now. Uh, I want to replace these two upper uh, blocks on this mass crane, on the spinnaker cr um, block crane, and we'll we'll uh, get that done later. Up top, um, I wanted to replace the VHF antenna all the way, cable all the way back, um, and bought the wire for it and everything, but then I discovered that they've run it down such an incredibly tight piece of the extrusion I don't know how they got it in there in the first place, and my new cable is ever so slightly bigger. It's the same style of cable, same model, but it's um, it's not uh, it's not working. It's not going to work. So I'm, I'm going to keep the cable itself, replace the lower fitting. I can't replace this fitting. I'm just going to clean it up with contact cleaner and use it. And we're going to make another little section from here to the to the um, to the antenna. So here we are, we got our, our new blocks up top. Um, the Ocean Series blocks are going away. These are these are larger looking, but the, the load limit is, is similar. Um, uh, with these, there's really not anything bigger available. They do make a 90 millimeter block, but it's it's complete overkill and, and way too big um, for the application. So um, this this is gonna be, these are gonna be good. Um, there'll be a big improvement. Um, I got all new sheaves. Uh, Delrin sheaves made in the US and uh, that, that's gonna be that's gonna be good you only get really one shot at these things these these cotter pins have to be covered in Sikaflex uh, they can't be left out like this they'll catch on the sail fabric and rip it um, so that has to be fixed uh, there's just a bunch of small little things we're missing still missing halyards they cut the wiring on these lights, which totally pissed me off. Instead of just undoing it, which is how it should be done, fixing it that way. Cotter pins have to have the, the bottom of the of the pin um, bent at least 20 degrees, or else it'll fall out. I don't like bending them all the way back around; it makes it impossible to get them out. Uh, but these are the types of things you got to inspect for. Same thing here. Like you know, I mean, that's just going to come right out. I'm really kind of not happy that he put it in that way. Here you see what's going on. This is going into this little tiny channel and there's no moving it. And uh, that's our VHF antenna. So I, I don't think that's getting replaced. Now, gotta make sure, that you, I'm putting on ferrules on the, on the, for the VHF antenna. One of the things you got to do is tone it out, make sure that there's no connectivity. And there's not, if you touch these together, you get a small tone. What happened with this was this foil, the little here, there's a hole um, that the pin is supposed to hold the foil in place and it came out. So what ended up happening was this foil got lifted up into the masthead where it got twisted under pressure and broke the upper part off. So what I ended up doing was I'm going to have to cut that off. I measured, measured this inner mandrel and found out that it was 24 millimeters, which turns out to be exactly what's the inside diameter this tubing is. I'm going to cut a little piece and then bolt it through to hold it in, in place, but I've got to cut it down. Of course, to do that, we're going to use a grinder. I don't have three hands, so I'm not going to be able to film it. Well, so there we go. Cut back to size. And we're ready to rock and roll, I think.
Okay. That looks good there. Now all I need to do is find a way to get this cut down. Fit right in here. Like so. And this will sit kind of proud on the side and prevent the um, the uh, upper swivel from going too far up. As you can see, this area here where it's dark, this is where the swivel typically sits. So I know I've got some space. Uh, if the sail was any taller, it wouldn't fit uh, properly. Yeah, so this is to so typical of, of every project that you do. <clears throat> I've been trying to replace these two clutches for like the last year, and I've been calling around to people saying, you know, I can't get this ped this little block off. It just it's glued down onto the teak and it won't come off. And I tried actually putting a line around the winch and one of these uh, clutches in order to try to twist it off, and it wouldn't come. It started literally lifting the teak off the deck. Um, and <clears throat> so they're like, "Oh, don't worry about it. It's got like an aluminum end bed plate inside. You know, probably we're not 100% sure. It's been a long time." So I take the thing off, and sure enough, it's got a freaking nut that drops off the bottom. Um, that was glued on because of the Sikaflex that they sealed it with, but but uh, otherwise it just. So I'm sitting here just going really, and um, quite frustrated. So with my options narrowing, I'm kind of deciding to. These are the bol the four bolts that hold it down. I'm thinking about just hitting them with a hammer and seeing if I can lift it up that way. So here I'm using one of Wendy's guitar strings to try to cut this thing loose. I figure that if, I'm, if I was in prison I would do like a quarter of an inch of it every day and after a year or so I'd have it off. Would you have a poster of Raquel Welsh over it? Hopefully. Guards didn't steal it. Also thinking that I'm not going to get all this done in one sitting so I'm going to leave this thing, this thing is like majorly tight. I'm hoping that overnight it might just kind of peel up <laughs> on its own. Whoever put this down with this amount of Sikaflex, I want to go find them in their retirement home and kill them. Or at least give them what for. The situation here is we've had, um, similar to what we've had um, in the forest day last year, was that this cotter pin, the guy couldn't get out. And the reason they couldn't get it out is because this tab, these tangs are too, are too wide and they, uh, they're pressing on the cotter pin, cutting it basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a vise and I'm going to compress these and try to get that cotter pin out first and then I'm, I'm going to compress them even more so that the pin can slide in and the cotter pin will be loose. Uh, you don't want cotter pins getting sheared off. Uh, the pin itself will probably come out quite easily but uh, you don't want doing to do damage um, to the cotter pins and that's the thing. If the cotter pin shears off the pin will just fall right out and this is one of your shrouds. This is like an absolute necessity um, uh, for keeping your rig up. And there it is, just like that. Get the pin out easily enough. And then um, make sure we don't get the pin out easily enough, get make sure that we don't lose that, and then we can we can work on the actual actual bracket. So here you see the problem. Um, the hole, notice that the hole is not is not fully exposed. Um, and that's because these need to be pushed in some and um, you know, you need kind of big equipment like a vise to do it, and luckily we have one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crank that, and hopefully I can bend it in some. We're here in the slip, Friday afternoon. All we need now is a mast. Parade of the furler. 
Had to get it off the mat, off the fence and bring it over, but you can't bend around the corner. So that's the mainsail furler and the jib furler now all here. Here it is up there. Boom's been delivered. Let's see, the mast is back up. And right before that, I went to get that taken care of. I was able to fish the nuts out. They're actually on brackets inside here. And I was able to use a longer screw, M8 metric screw to get down and pick them up and pull them up and then get the one screw down on the other side to hold it in place and then use the screws all the way through um, and everything's good. So we have our clutches installed. I didn't even have to take this piece off. So um, I'm telling you, nobody wants to take that apart again. Hmm. What are you thinking? Is it a good day? I'm thinking it's a good day. The mast is up. Nobody got hurt. Nothing got broken. It's good. All good. Tomorrow we get our boom. Finish getting the mast up. It's gonna be a great day tomorrow. Doing some ever so slight paint touch up. Yeah, so now we're pulling the furler out uh, because as you would expect, it's not working. So I'm gonna to first start with a continuity test on the on the wires um, and uh, after that I'm not so sure uh, I assume we'll probably hot wire the motor and make sure that that we have good uh, the motor itself is working we're getting we have 28 volts at the uh, at the relay at the box um, so we know it's getting power hard to check that all right so new terminal time terminals Terminal's broke. That's why we didn't get it. So Dwayne's here helping us with getting all of our motor stuff. And he's been great. Good rigger. Put some new con two new lugs on this one. Just cut it off with the lineman's pliers. Not one thing, it's another. Okay, I'm gonna go try it again. What's going on? <coughs> oh gosh, I don't know. They've got a leak in the in the hosing. I don't know why. Although I can suspect why. I see the hose kind of bitten into this thing. Let's go give it a try it again and see. Mm -hmm. So we came back from came back from a, you know the season off and found that this pipe was leaking this black hose and these black hoses are not great um, they they're old and they're kind of kind of fading where it's actually happening from is up here this anti-siphon loop this is an important part of boats is having that anti-siphon systems in place they should be labeled obviously like we have um, so that you can identify what's going on with them at a, at a glance but what's happening with this one is that the is that the on the back you might not be able to see it very easily but the hose clamp bit into the the rubber and it's 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 leaking right there this may not be the right sized hose for this uh they i see a lot of sickle flex or some sort of sealant around 
Um, so, uh, you know, I let sleeping dogs lie with most of this stuff. These are single cl single hose clamps because they're above the water line. Um, a lot of marine people would tell you use double hose clamps always, everywhere. But if you're going to use single hose clamps, the place to do it is above the water line. Below the water line, you really should have opposing hose clamps, jubilee clips as the Brits call them, on each on each uh, each connection. The reason why this works with one on these is because I know from looking at these that they step down. They they work they're designed to work with different sized hosing and. Uh, you only really have the collar area here at the top. So a second hose clamp isn't really going to fit on very well. Having the extra spare hoses and stuff that you need is, is just such a huge thing. Today's Sunday and nobody's around. Um, but luckily we have plenty of stainless steel marine grade hose clamps. So we can finish this job without totally stressing about it and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna even though it's gonna look ugly I'm gonna put the connector piece I have um, one of these male to male connectors and uh, I'm gonna put it where it's visible and easily accessible rather than hiding it um, in case there's a problem later on um, it can be taken apart um, people can see that the, the it, I can't take the black hose out all the way because it just goes back into the system and it's longer than I thought. And this little piece here is not the one that was um, that was broken. What's in there? Down there, it doesn't look like anything coming out either. So I think we're in good shape here. Did it work? I think it worked. Yay! Yay! So my feeling on, on getting a good watertight connection on these on these connect, on these areas where you've got PVC's type hosing is to is to warm the PVC up with a heat gun. You don't want to get it so hot that it melts or starts to bubble around the edges or anything like that. You just want it to get soft and rubbery. And once you do that, you just put it on, you snug it down with the hose clamps, and then you wait about 15 minutes and then you give it like another quarter turn on each of them. You don't need any type of grease or 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 P this this had had um, PTFE plumber's tape on it, which is terrible. It's that's that's not the right thing to put on something like that. That's for threads. And even then it's it's you want to use liquid um, PTFE uh, plumbers. Uh, uh, it's like a goop and it's much better than the tape. Really works um, works much better. Anyway, if you warm the, the plastic up first, it, it just shrinks better around whatever it is you're clamping it to. If you don't do that, what happens is you run the risk of having a kind of a fold develop in the plastic. It doesn't want to shrink to size. It doesn't want to compress. And so, like I said, just warm it up a little bit and you'll, and you'll be good. You don't need anything, anything on there at all. Just assemble it dry and tighten it up. There's another small little improvement to the boat. It's getting a a uh, remote, wired remote for the stereo outside in the cockpit because you always want to change the volume or the advance the track and unless you've got your phone in your hand or the chart plotter on it can't be done so this is our new, our new thing and I noticed while I was in here just looking that this ground has come loose so I'm going to have to fix that as well but then it's pretty much ready to go. Appears to be working. Worked on the first try. <laughs> Unusual situation. <laughs> so another another aspect of our whole kind of refit for this year is, and this is something that needs to be done really kind of periodically. You always have to check to see if there's any updates available for the um, for the char plotters. And in this case, there was. There's a they, they put out a, an update about every quarter from Raymarine, and you download those off the web, and then. Um, load them in. Normally I can load this in from the from the uh, uh, chart plotter down at the nav station but for some reason it failed to do to take this update today which meant that there were different versions of the software on the different on the two different uh, chart plotters and I don't think that's a good idea so I took the whole pod apart and, and I was you know in, installing the um, 
the fusion uh, volume control, but also trying to get in here to the SD card reader in the back so I could put the, the chart plotter, um, the SD card directly into the plotter. And that now it seems to be taking it. So kind of a big thing to do this. So what I've been doing now, uh, we've had our, our rig off and it, it's back up and looking absolutely beautiful after being repainted. And I'm in the process of replacing all the original Lumar Ocean Series blocks with the newer HTX blocks and some some of them are selected racing blocks from their line. Uh, the big difference between them is that the load ratings are similar uh, but that um, that they, 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 they turn under load a lot easier with the ball bearings and the thrust bearings. And, uh, actually it's a needle bearing uh, on the sheave and then thrust round Torlon thrust bearings on the side. Uh, and so as part of that, I've been going through and making sure that I've got seizing wire on every block on the boat. And I'm just doing a rig inspection as well to, to look at the, uh, look at all the cotter pins and make sure that they're in. As far as the, as far as the safety wire goes, uh, what we're using here is Monel, uh, um, seizing wire and the tools obviously are a wrench for tightening the shackles diagonal cutters for cutting the um, the uh, the wire although these these uh, needle noses have a cutter as well and then of course the needle noses for twisting it and bending it around uh, you don't want to leave any exposed ends where that, that could snag on someone's bathing suit or their skin or something like that it's one part of our refit that's that's a big deal is we're getting new clutches um, these these are uh, three um, obviously triple uh, versions and we're replacing the old spin lock um, clutches that were on there before which were doubles so we'll have three lines uh, now instead of just two um, the cams on these were getting worn and they were starting to slip um, and you can buy new cams but then you have to disassemble the whole clutch and everything else it's not the end of the world but I wanted to really go to the third to have to have three uh, three lines and I went and I bought um, the, the appropriate shackles to just replace the shackles that we use for our mainsail um, and our head sail, head sail and at least the ones that are that are kind of looking a little bit dodgy. Um, again, these that you, your entire sit, rig hinges on on having these things be be ship shape and, and, and not break. Um, it's okay to use ones when they're when they're in, in, you know when they're when they're they're holding up well uh, but if they're not looking so good it's time to replace them. Just not worth the the money. I mean we're talking I think uh, everything there is was like forty five dollars at the channelry. So here I've I've tapped the new holes. Um used some some C lube to lubricate the um, lubricate the threads on the tap and use a 6.8 um, millimeter metric bit for an, eight, an M8 fastener. On the fastener itself, I'm using Tef Gel on the flange of, the, of, of this flathead uh, hex drive screw. I'm gonna be using um, Loctite on the threads themselves. And the reason for that is that when these seize up, uh, they have a tendency to, to, to seize up around the flange um, and that's that's how they become very difficult to remove. Uh, the threads themselves um, aren't quite so bad. You've got more uh, leverage on those with the wrench. Uh, there's the finished finished product. I uh, always hate drilling into the mast. It's a it's a, uh, a one-time thing. You just can't ever ever get it wrong. So you have to be so, so careful. But, you know, there, there it is. And I think uh, it'll be a nice improvement to the boat. Taking care of our passerelle. Oh boy. We haven't had that much time to film. But the boat's finally pretty much ready to rock and roll, we think. We got our spray hood up. We've got our lines all set and everything's all kind of finally, I believe, ship shape. I'm just gonna probably have to, we're gonna try to sail over to Falmouth this morning. 
you know, it's early this afternoon, but um, we're leaving here in a minute. But uh, if not, we're gonna have to motor. It's been kind of sketchy wind. Uh, little rain showers and very, very slow winds to speak. So once we get out into the, uh, out of the channel, sometimes it picks up.